Hey everybody, welcome to Fill the Void. I um, hope you guys are enjoying your, your Sunday today. It's, a, it's late in the evening now, but I thank you anyways for joining me. Um, uh, I hope that you guys are enjoying your families and had a wonderful weekend. It was a little rainy yesterday, a little cold yesterday, but it still was lovely. I know I'm enjoying my family. I'm enjoying everything that we did yesterday in the celebration of my own. My wife's grandma, Margaret and Ashley, we had fun with that. And, um, you know, I just hope you guys are really taking the time to, like, appreciate the loved ones that you have around you because, you know, you never know when it's the last time you're going to get the chance to say, I love you. So um, take every opportunity that you can. I know that I have stuck up my game and, you know, just trying to reach out to different people that I normally, you know, I'm not a person that calls and a person that, but, you know, I'm trying to, like, you know, do better at that, especially today, because you don't know, you don't know what's gonna happen, and you don't want to feel like, hey, I should have did more, I should have did more. So I'm working on myself. So I hope you guys are doing the same thing because we in, we in a different time period now. You know, we here today, we gone tomorrow. So, so that's what we was doing this weekend. We were spending time with family. Man, we enjoyed ourselves. We had a, we had fun. So, um, but that said, I just want to just welcome you. Uh, we got a word tonight, and I'm gonna before we get started, I'm gonna just get into a word, a prayer. So if you would just bow your heads with me for a few seconds, dear Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for today, Lord. We thank you for just guiding us um, and uh, shedding your grace and your mercy upon us and getting us through this day safely, Father. We pray for your continual uh, protection, Father. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, um, for this this bread that we're about to break, Father. We we thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. We just thank you for you. Your, uh, your wonderful knowledge that you have imparted in us to show us how to live this life, Lord. We thank you for revealing these things to us, Lord, and, and all of, uh, and everything, Lord. We ask that you just get your glory, Father. We ask that you get your honor, Father, because it's all about you, Lord. It's all about you and your glory and your will, Father. It's not about us, Father. So with that said, Father, I ask that you just increase your spirit within me and let Roscoe decrease as I come before you, uh, as I come before you today, Father. Lord, I ask that you just humble me, Lord, and let me um, uh, preach and teach your word the way that you will be proud of, Lord. Let me speak what you want to speak, Lord. And when you're done using me, Father, I pray that you just shut my mouth and let me be quiet, Father. And, Lord, I pray that the, um, you guide the word wherever you need it to go, Lord. Hit the hearts that um, need to be hit, Lord. I want to speak life, Lord. I don't want to speak any discouragement to anybody, but I want to be able to speak life to somebody today, Father. So in your son, Jesus' name, we pray these prayers. Amen. 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 I, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be here. This is a different time. You know, I have some things going on, but this is a different time. But I'm I'm, I'm happy because um, it's, it's good to switch stuff up every now and then because you never know. Somebody who never has seen us this morning, you know, they might be able to watch today live. So so I'm, I'm happy for that. And I just want to give God all the glory. I want to give my wife, I want to honor my beautiful wife, Renee Sam Smith. I just want to thank her for everything that she do. Um, just always going, you know, going into battle for somebody else. You know, I just want to always give her, her flowers while she's here. You know, we always wait till uh, somebody pass away to give them their flowers. But I always want to give her her props while she's here. Tell her how much I appreciate her, how much I love her while she's here. And um, we all should do start doing the same thing. So. I just want to do that, take time and do that real quick. And with that said, you know, um, this whole this whole year we've been talking about um, talking a lot about faith. We've been talking a lot about prepare, getting prepared. We've been talking a lot about um, bracing ourselves for the struggle, bracing ourselves for the um, the the success, bracing ourselves for everything. We want to be prepared for everything. Because we admit we was, you know, as Christians, we got caught sleeping at the wheel when 2020 came. So we've been we've been preparing ourselves. We've been we've been um, going through the grind, trying to get ready for whatever may come our way. We don't want to get caught sleep on the job a second time. So whatever this year, whether this year bring us success, whether this year bring us some struggles and some some pain that we have to get through, we just want to uh, keep even kill. We want to. Um, we don't want to get too high, too low. We just want to uh, stay in the will of God. We want to stay in that that perfect um, 
that perfect ground where we're not too, it's just like the earth in that um, Goldilocks zone, they call it the Goldilocks zone. The earth is in a perfect position. It's not too close to the sun. It's not too far away from the sun. And it's, um, it's right in that perfect position so it doesn't get too hot or too cold. That's how we need to stay um, as, as Christians. We need to stay kind of in the, the even kill, you know, steady, strong, you know, we need we can't get too low when things happen and we also can't get too out of control overreact when other good, even good things happen so we got to stay in that perfect zone man be excited but at the same time you know stay keep it together you know because if i was to show my excitement right now how i really feel on the inside right now you know i'll be i probably wouldn't be able to get this message out because so much god is doing in our life he's changing our lives he's turning our life he did a whole 180 on our whole life. And um, if I was to not be able to hold that thing again, I wouldn't be able to get nothing done because I just think about the goodness of the Lord because his plan that I didn't even think, um, I couldn't even imagine. I always say I can't even dream this up. In my wildest dream, I couldn't even put this thing together the way that God has put it together. So I just want to always just thank him and keep him first in our life. As my wife said, we always trying to remain humble it's, 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 it's easy to remain humble when your focus is just on pushing the kingdom, pushing God forward. And we do have some amazing things going on in the in, um, New Direction ministry. Um, right now, as we speak, I'm working on, on trying to get you a virtual campus that you can go on and, and um, lock and get into some things on the, on the campus. Is a, it's a bunch of different things that you'll be able to do. But I really want you to be able to log on there and go to church on that virtual campus it's going to be a website we're going to be launching launching it hopefully tomorrow uh, if not sometime this week we're going to get it finished and we're going to launch that so you'll be able to go on to a, a whole different space besides social media if you're if you because you know we all got to grow so we can start off on social media but you might want your own little private area to go watch the word without you know strolling something popping up on your feed you know something popping up saying hey this person just said this and it's all a distraction so we all want to we want to be able to to get you in a place where you'll be able to grow so that little private area you can go to the website log in you can comment over there and you'll be able to watch over there do everything you can do here you'll be able to do it over there and it's um it's another little feature that i want us to start pushing is um because in order to for us to, to really connect and stay together we have a prayer wall that's going to be on the site where you can go and post your prayers you can put your name or you can, you don't have to put your name but if you want us to pray for you if you want anybody who comes on the site to be able to pray for you um, you can post it on the, on our prayer wall, and we we definitely gonna be lifting it up in prayer every morning, every night. We um, cause I go before the Lord every morning to just thank Him and um, lift up new direction. And anybody who could connect it in new direction, um, we pray for those things that um you are going through at that time. So that's a nice little feature. You can go on that um, prayer wall and post something, and people can that comes on it. Um, they can put that they pray for it, you know, so it's a it's a nice little thing to, to connect us all, you know So because we all have to pray because that's one of the things in building our faith You have to develop our relationship with God because if you don't develop that relationship with God your faith ain't never gonna go nowhere But you got to have faith in order to initiate so it's all ties in together But you can't do one without the other you understand so you have to develop your relationship with God. You got to pray. So that's an important part of that relationship with God. You got to talk to him. You can't have no relationship with anybody, really, that's worth anything if you don't really talk to him. Because if you ain't talked to him a long time, if you really need him, and then if you call him, you're going to hesitate to call him because you're like, I ain't talked to this person in so long. Now I'm calling him because I need something. You're going to feel guilty. So... If you already talking to God, you talking to him, you got the relationship. I mean, he right there with you. If you need something, you need to call him. He right there. You ain't hesitating. So that's just that's a part of growing as a Christian. Growing that once you take that initial step, you have to grow. You can't just stop. That's why I said social media is the first step. Um, when we get that campus ready, that's the second step to connecting with you until we're able to get into a building and really see your face and uh, really connect with you on that level. Um, but this is what we're doing now, and I'm excited about it. And um, everybody around us is excited about it. So uh, with that said, we just want to um, talk about a little bit of what I'm going to be speaking on this evening. 
Um, I posted a little bit about it uh, yesterday on Saturday. I always post what I will be talking about today on Feel of the Boy. I asked the question. I don't know if I asked it. I just put I know everybody out there have heard the question. Not the question, but the phrase. Um, just follow your heart. Renee, just follow your heart. That that right there is like a one of the most common growing up, that's one of the most common um phrases that I, I've heard and you know, I once believed that. You know, I once um subscribed to that belief that, you know, in this life we gotta do what makes us happy. We gotta do what um our heart tell us to do. But living life and having experience with um applying that strategy, I came up short a lot. I came up short a lot because I, I put the I wanted to follow my heart. I dealt I basically did what um uh, made me feel good. I did what made me happy, and I didn't involve God. And if I did involve God, I involved him after the fact. I involved God after I had made my decision. So when I followed my heart and then involved God afterwards, it always turned out into a disaster. So in this, this aspect, we're talking about the heart. And what I mean when I say the heart, I'm not talking about the organ that's in your body that's pumping blood. I'm talking about the 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 heart is basically you. It's basically you and your nature, your human nature. And if it's your human nature, you know it's flesh. So when the Bible speaks about the heart in this in this aspect, is when it speaks about the heart, um, what it's talking about in this relation, it's talking about basically you, your flesh. So when the Bible says, hey, the heart is desperately wicked um, above all things, it said, hey, put your name there. Roscoe is desperately wicked <laughs> above all things. So the, the title of this text is, um, the title of this um, message is that I'll never trust you again. I'll never trust you again. Now, when I'm talking about, when I'm saying I'll never trust you again, I'm not talking about any particular person, but I'm talking about my heart. I'm talking about my heart. Why am I talking about my heart? Why would I never trust myself? Why would I never trust me again? That doesn't even make sense logically, right? It don't make sense. If you're not, if you haven't developed your relationship with God, if you haven't um, took the next step and gave your life to Christ, what I'm saying today might not make sense to you. What person in their right mind would, would not trust their self? What person in their right mind would say they'll never trust their self again? I might sound like I'm crazy, that I'm gonna lost my mind. Cause if anybody um, that you could trust, you should be able to who trust yourself, right? But when you give your life to God, when you give, you take that step to give your life to Jesus Christ, um, it's gonna be some things that you're gonna have to work through because once you take that step, your heart is the the, the part of you that only looks out for self. And we're called to, to, to follow God. We're called to put all those things away and put our cross up and uh, follow Jesus Christ. But yet this thing that uh, we've been serving our whole life, this, this flesh we've been serving our whole life, is still right there trying to do what it do. It's just his job. That's his job. It's his nature. That's why we call it the nature, the human nature. We was born this way. We was born like that. So when, when we, so when we get saved, it like switches our whole mindset. We got it transforms our whole way of thinking. It transforms. It renews our mind. It gives us a different aspect on life. That our lives are not just here to serve ourselves, but we're here to serve serve God and serve others. So when you switch that mindset, you're gonna have to think. You're gonna feel a little crazy. Like I can't do what I my flesh telling me to do because I gotta please God. I got to focus on pleasing the Lord. And it's a shock to your body when you have to look yourself in the mirror and say, I do not trust you. That's why we, as, us, as believers, we have to hold each other accountable. We have to um, have a community of believers that's um, pushing us and, 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 and challenging us to, to grow and challenging us to um to, to, to kill sin, to kill flesh, to challenge us to kill that nature. That's why God said, come together and um, 
um, in a, in a community in one body to work together because he knew it was going to be hard. He knew it was going to be challenging. Because anything that's within yourself is going to be challenging. When I look in the mirror, that's why I said before that, the, the, that Satan is not my whole problem. I'm my whole problem. Wow. I'm my problem. The person that's looking in the mirror, I'm not worrying about uh, the devil. I got enough problems within myself that I, I need to crucify myself daily. Paul said he crucified his flesh daily. You have to. So when we're talking about the heart, that's what we're talking about, that, that struggle, that battle that you're going to grow through as a Christian. But, but every time we, we struggle through something, we always know that there's growth at the end. I remember um, my cousin Bobby Jr., he related it to like the, um, the moth the, in the cocoon. You know, before it, it, it hatches and becomes a moth, it pushes its way through the cocoon and break open. It was a struggle. It was hard to get to that point where he can, the moth can like break out of that cocoon. It was hard to get to that point. It was hard to, to push through all the, the, the hard shell. It was hard to push through it. It was a struggle. But after that struggle, he got out and then he can, it's the moth and the butterfly that do that too. The butterfly too. The butterfly can spread his wings and it's a beautiful creature. But you just don't know what it took for the butterfly to get to that point. So that's the that's the struggle that we're we're talking about here. It's the struggle of the believer. We don't we don't we don't we don't we don't despise this struggle. We actually we embrace it because we know what the end gonna be. Because we got the end in mind. We got heaven in mind. We got eternal life in mind. We got our relationship with Jesus in mind. We know what the end going to be. So we don't pay too much attention to what happens on this life. We switching our mindset. Are you with me? So that's the background story on what we're talking about. The heart and why I'm talking about I'll never trust it again. I'll never trust me again. It's desperately weak, wicked. It's deceitful. Every time you 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 you're thinking that um, you, you're trying to go to the next, you're thinking you're straight, you're thinking you're Superman. Things can happen when you think you're Superman. You're not superhuman. You're not super Christian. In Proverbs, it says that we must guard our heart above all things because everything comes out of the heart. All your decisions come out of the heart. Every decision that you make is coming out of the heart. So you must guard it. The things that we let into our spirit, the things we let into our life, the people we let into our life, it can break down that barrier, that, that, that body, that, um, that, that vest, that bulletproof vest. It can break that down. If you let certain things come into it, you might feel strong today and then tomorrow. Not so strong because you know broke down your armor. So that's why the Bible says guard your heart because it up comes everything that you will do in life. So with that said, I, I I won't trust myself completely again. I won't trust my heart again because I'm gonna trust in God to lead me and guide me. I'm gonna trust in God and my relationship with God. I'm gonna build that. I'm gonna build my faith in God because I saw what trusting in myself got me. It got me nowhere. I always got to leave, leave me stranded with my hands up. And that's, that stands like this. You know how we be just trying to figure out, man, what happened? I thought that was going to work. I thought that was going to work, man. I thought I had it this time. I thought I had it this time, man. But I didn't involve God. I just listened to my heart. I did what I wanted to do. It got in the worst situation. A worse situation. Now I'm, in, I'm involving God. The Lord did me out of this hole. <laughs> did me out. Maybe I'm the only one. I mean, I'm tripping. Maybe I'm the only one. Maybe, maybe it's just me who, who um, won't trust they some. You know, maybe it's just me who, who you know, who go through this this struggle, this battle, um, trying to grow. You know, trying to be a better man, trying to be a better father, trying to you know, um, submit to God's will, not our will. Because we all had our plans, and we all and we all know the feeling of seeing our plans not happen the way we thought it should happen. 
But what if our plans are not God's plans? You can go through that, even though you understand that that thing still can. It's a struggle. It still can hurt. Even when Jesus was in the garden, you know, he was telling he was telling God. He said, "Is there any other way? Is there any other way that we can get this done?" Is there any other way? And then he said, not my will, but your will. Because he had to submit to the plan that was in place, the plan of the Father, and not his plan, not his way. Saying as as we, even more so, we have to submit to the plan. Because we, we're not even on the level Jesus was on. And yet he submitted. We have to check ourselves. We have to check our motives because it's so easy for us to get prideful. It's, it's so easy for our heads to swell up. We get we we preach one good sermon, our heads swell up on our on our shoulders. We sing one good song, our heads swell up and get prideful and thinking you know it's easy to think you starting to do something and you get so much attention and you starting to think you might be better than somebody else. It's easy to slip into that that it's easy to slip into that kind of trap. But we have to continue to look at Jesus cuz you look at Jesus if anyone had the right if anyone had the right to 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 be boastful it was Jesus Christ. If anyone had the right to he he could have been famous, he could have had all that, but he rejected all that stuff to fulfill the plan, plan of the Father. Cuz he understood that it wasn't in the Father's will for him to be rich and, and to acquire objects on earth and to just reign on earth as king and conquer the world, conquer the, um, the earth with armies and take over other nations. It wasn't in the Father's will for him to do that. If Jesus wanted to reign, that king, reign as king, he was well within his rights. But him being so humble, him being so meek, he rejected all that stuff and said, no, no, I'm not going to take that. Father, let your will be done. So we always going to be able to, to look to Jesus for uh, excellent examples of how we should be. So if Jesus if Jesus was rejecting all this stuff, not saying that he, was strugg he wasn't struggling for anything. He wasn't wanting for anything. He had everything he needed. But he wasn't striving for earthly material things. He wasn't trying to chase all this other stuff. And then get pride from both of them and think we walk by somebody and think that we, we better than him. If anybody had the right to do it, it was him. And he's our example. And he did not do it. He did not set that, that precedent for us. So who do we think we are? As mere humans haven't even did a, a fragment of what Jesus had done. Who do we think we are? Jesus always gave it back to the Father. Jesus always checked his flesh. He always checked it at the door. He always kept his heart guarded with the word of God, the suit of armor. So how can we think we superheroes going out here in this world and thinking that we gonna, um, we, we're going to, we're, what's the word? We're, um, we're, we're not able to, to get caught up in situations. We're not, we're, we're invincible. That's the word I'm looking for, invincible. We're not invincible, man. Humble yourself if you think you are. Or you will get humbled by the world. Life will humble you. With that said, um, if you would, if you have your Bible, I hope you have your Bibles. If you could turn with me to the book of Jeremiah, the 18th chapter. We're starting at the first verse. So that's Jeremiah. Let me put it on the screen. That's Jeremiah, the 18th chapter. We're starting at the, the first verse, and we're going to go through um, to verse 12. I might read all of this, but I might not read all of this because I have another um, passage of Scripture I want to get to also in uh, Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. So you can mark this one and then mark the other one. Uh, I'm hoping to get to um, both of them. We'll see where the spirit leads me, but and this this passage of uh, a scripture in Jeremiah the 18th uh, chapter, the first verse, verse number one says, "This is the word of this is the word that came to Jeremiah 
from the Lord. As we know, Jeremiah is a is a prophet of God in the Old Testament. He's a prophet that was speaking to the children of Israel, speaking to the nation of Israel about the things concerning God. So in verse 2 it says, Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I and I saw him working on a wheel. But the pot was shaping from the pot was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the pot is formed into formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. So uh, uh, potters, people who make pots, I think we all probably seen them growing up in school. They have they have these wheels that they put the pots on, the clay on, I should say. They have the wheels they put the clay on, and then it spins around, and then you take your hands and kind of mold it and shape it into what you want it to be. So yeah, so so Jeremiah was sent to the the potter's house. He went, and then when he went to the potter's house, he saw that the potter was do, he was doing what he do. He was at work, working that pot. You know, shaping and molding, and then it says that it was marred in his hand. What I say, it was, it, it was, it was impaired. It's like marred means to be impaired. It was, it was messed up. So it was messed up in his hand. So the potter took the um the the, the pot and made it into something else. So in verse five, and it said that the potter um. Just to go back up real quick, and it said that the potter he shaped the the pot that was messed up. He shaped it to best what the best uh, what suited what he thought was the best. In verse five, it says, "Then the word of God came to me. He said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as the potter does?' Declares the Lord, like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel." If at any time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation I warn repents of the, its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on the disaster I had planned. Now this right here is, is this is mind blowing here. This is mind blowing stuff. God is asking a question to the, the, the children of Israel. He's asking them a question. He said, can I not do with you as I have done with as the clay, as the potter has done with that, that, that clay pot? Hmm. Because the children of Israel, if you know anything about them, you know they was marred. They was messed up. They had their issues. They had their problems. So can God not take them and, and make what he sees fit and mold them into what he, he wants them to be? So God is asking the question. And then another thing it says, if you will repent and, and turn back to me, I can change my mind. So looking at this and looking at the, the, the nation of the United States and looking at everything that we've been, been talking about um, in, in these past months, Everything that's going on, the judgment against uh, that that God has allowed to happen against us, the the, the decisions that we made, the, the 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 decisions that we made to exclude God, can we not? Uh, can we not change His mind of the coming disaster that He may have planned for us? This is why we're saying that you need to pray and we need to intercede on the behalf of the United States. We need to intercede on behalf of the people that they repent and they turn back to God. Because God says, it's just like that, that, that clay pot. I can change it and form it into something better. I can change my mind on this upcoming disaster if you repent and you will turn to me. In the same way in your life. Same way individually. He can, you can repent and, and give your, your, your life to God and he could change what was about to happen to you if you did. He can turn some things around if you didn't. He can, make, he can give you more time. If only you would repent and turn back to God and, and, and get back in your rightful place. So I don't care if you're a Christian and you have stopped, um, you have stopped serving God in the capacity that you was because you have backslid. And you can you can get this thing right today as long as you got breath in your body. If you repent and turn back to Him, 
if you repent and turn and give it back to him, God can change his mind. The plans that the plans that he had for you, he can change it if you repent and turn back to him. That's all he really wants in the first place. You could be heading for destruction right now. You can be heading for chaos right now. You might have said in your spirit that you are done with God. You might have said in your spirit that you feel like God is done with you. You might you might feel forsaken. You might feel left, lost, and abandoned by God right now. But I'm here to tell you that it is not true. God is right what He said. It He right what He always been. We are the ones who moved. We are the ones who got off course. We are the ones who followed our heart and, and got our heart broken. We did that, not God. But the good news is that you don't have to stay broken. You don't have to stay on that course, that path of destruction. You don't have to stay on that separated from God. You can unite yourself back to God if you just repent and come back to him. And we can be just like that pot that the potter had on the wheel that was all messed up. And he shaped it and made it into something else that he saw fit. All of the Christians, whoever got saved, we are all like that pot anyways. We all was something else in the world, but then we got shaped and molded into what God was wanting us to be. I'm not like this before God got to me. I was not preaching his teaching his word like this before God got to me. It was not it was the furthest thing on my mind, but God saw fit to fit um to, to get this this boy that was messed up and transformed him into somebody who would speak his word and, and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he would do the same for you. Even when I got off course, he got me back on that wheel again. Okay, you did you mess this up, son. Okay, so I'm going to just ah, fix you up and mold you and boom, there you go. Better than you ever was. So it's possible. Do not lose hope. Do not lose that faith that you have in God. Because God never moves and he never fails. He never forsakes us. It is us. It is our heart that leads us away from God. Why do you, you trust yourself? Why do you trust your heart when your heart is trying to lead you away from God? Seek God first, and then all this other stuff will line up for you. Your heart will line up in the right spot. If you, seek, if you let the Spirit do His work and seek God first, your heart will line up. Everything will be in its proper perspective, and everything will be in its proper place. If you do what the first thing first. Involve God in your plans. Involve God in what you're thinking because he might He might be telling you to do something else and you're going to have to switch it up and, and do it. But you got to be you got to be in the proper place to do that. You can't be seeking your own pleasure. You can't be following your own heart. You can't be doing your own motives. So we got to be like that pot that the potters that the potter was molding and shaping that was messed up and let God do the same thing with us cuz God asked that God himself asked the question. Did he not ask the question? Yes. <laughs> I don't even know where I left off at, but that's good. Okay, I'll pick up at verse 7. If at any time I announce that a nation and kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and that nation I warrant repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on the disaster I had planned. That right there is amazing, and I'm excited to hear that because the reason why I'm excited to hear that because that means that the disaster that might be planned for the, the our nation or ourselves, we don't have to go that right. The good news, that is good news. If we repent and we give it back to God and we intercede on behalf of others, we have an opportunity that God might change his mind. Yes. Yes. That's good news. Yes. All right. Okay, let me see. I'm easily lost. Don't mind me. Verse 9. And if, I meant verse 8. Okay. And if the nations I want. Okay. I'm on 9. And if, at any, and if at another time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be built up and planted. And if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me. Then I would reconsider the good I had intended to do for it. Now listen to this. Goes both ways, I guess. We can mess up the good that God has for us. 
So God said, you might have been doing good and you, I got all this stuff planned for us, for you. I got all this stuff planned for your life. I got all this stuff um, ready for you because you're doing good. But if you follow your heart and do what you want to do instead, he said, just like I can switch the, 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 the bad for good, I could take that good I had planned for you and let you go your merry way. So it's reversed on this one. So don't think that you excluded the plans that God has for you and then you follow your heart, start doing your own thing, start being prideful and treating people bad. Hey, he could take that stuff from you just like he gave it to you, just like that. So we have to be careful. We have to be mindful of these things that we're seeking God and we're hearing his voice and that we're moving how he want us to move, saying what, we, what he want us to say and not what we want to say. Doing what God wants us to do, not what we want to do. I hope you, I hope you follow me. I don't want to lose anybody, but um, that that's mind blowing right there. He says I can take the good I had intended for. It. Man, don't do it. <laughs> In verse eleven, it says, "Now therefore, say to the people of Judah." Talk, he telling him that Jeremiah telling them to tell the people of Judah. Go tell him he prophesying to him. Judah and those living in, is, in Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says. Look, I am preparing a disaster for you and devising a plan against you. So turn for your evil ways, each one of you, and reform your ways and your actions. But they will reply, it's no use. We will continue with our plans. We will all follow the stubbornness of our evil hearts Lord have mercy help me so this is Jeremiah talking to the people to the people of Israel it's a it's a push and pull relationship with God and the people of Israel he's God has sent warnings God is sending warnings through uh, Isaiah he sent warnings through everybody to to warn the people of Israel to repent and come back to me and stop doing your own will so this is just another instant. The, the event that that he's the plans that God has for Israel, the disaster, the upcoming disaster he has for him is getting closer. It's getting closer, and this is another aspect of the people rejecting the 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 words of Jeremiah, in essence, rejecting God, the words of God, because Jeremiah was sent by God to say these words, and what the people said. What the people said. He said, they said that, um, did I read that correctly? He says, but they will reply, it's no use. We will continue with our plans. We will all follow the stubbornness of our evil hearts. Man, that, that's crazy. So it, as insane as that sounds, if you haven't taken all your burdens and your cares to the Lord, you sound the same way they sound. You're doing the same thing they're doing. If you, haven't, if you haven't surrendered at all to Jesus Christ, you're doing the same thing these people are doing. You sound just like them, just like they sound to you right now. After God told them this and sent them warning after warning after warning after warning, he, he sound the same way when we, we're in disobedience, when we're not, we're not fully committed to God, when we sleep on God. We was doing the same thing they doing. We're going to follow. We're going to do it my way. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it my will. I can tell you right now, this ain't going to end well. But I encourage you to read the rest of that chapter. But I'm finna, I'm finna fast forward ahead to chapter um 29. Because I, in chapter 29, it's a it's it's some good things in chapter 29. But this is this in chapter 29 is just. The, the disaster that God was was um, foretelling in chapter 18 has happened. So what happened was 
the 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 people of Israel was taken over by another by Babylon. They destroyed everything. They came in, and the people got exiled out to um to Babylon, and they was basically back in bondage. They rejected the words and the warnings of Jeremiah, and then the event that God said, the disaster that He said that y'all can change this disaster. It came upon them, and then now they're they're actually in the 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 the, the city or the the land of Babylon as their their slave. They're in bondage now. They was free, but now they're in bondage because they refused to listen to God. They refused to yield to the Spirit. They refused to repent. So now they back and bunish. Did the what God has warned them about has come true. And um which one do I want to start? So Jeremiah writes a letter to them while they're in Babylon. In verse 29, in um, chapter 29. This is Jeremiah. He's writing a letter to them while they're in Babylon. And it says, this is what the Lord Almighty, in verse 4, it says, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I, I carry into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Now, what y'all think finna happen? Now, when I read this, I was like, okay, God has sent the letter. He finna get us out of this bondage. He finna, he finna get us out of this bondage. He finna, he finna rescue us. He finna come through for us. God has sent this letter. Jeremiah, yes, tell us. We learned our lesson, Lord. They, they done destroyed our village. They done destroyed our city. They destroyed everything. Now give us a letter with the blueprint of what we need to do to go ahead and get back on your side and get up out of this mess so you can go ahead. And, you know, that's what I would have been thinking when I got the letter um, from Jeremiah. I don't know. So the letter said in verse 5, it says, Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives, find wives for your sons and give the daughters in marriage. So that so they too may have sons and daughters. Increasing number there do not decrease. Also seek the peace of prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. What? Pray to the Lord for it. Because if it prospers, you will prosper too. Now at this point I'll be like, Lord, what you what you what what you talking about, Lord? <laughs> you you said you basically you telling me to get put my feet up and make myself at home. Put my feet up and basically, Lord, what are you talking about? You're not going to rescue us? We learned our lesson. We sorry. So I'm waiting for the letter to be read. And he, he said, go ahead and have bait. What? Go ahead and plant a garden, Lord. I don't want to be here long enough to plant a garden. I don't want to be here long enough to have my grandchildren, grandchildren, grandchildren uh, live in this land. I, don't, I ain't trying to, I'm trying to go back home. I'm about trying to go back to the promised land, the land you gave us. Lord, they done came through and then burnt the city up and defeated us. Don't you think we learned our lesson? We repent. But the Lord say, man, get comfortable in your situation that you created for yourself. Sure. Get comfortable. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to ride this one out for a while, fellas. You're gonna have to ride this one out. You're gonna have to sit tight. You're gonna have to go through this mess you made for yourself. Sure. <laughs> you're gonna have to go through this. I'm gonna bring you out, but you're gonna have to. Hey, you fin I ain't finna. It ain't gonna be like that. You you gonna have to feel this a little bit. Basically, what the Lord told him. It says, okay. Also, this might be good news. Seek the peace of the prosperity. I think I read that. Seek the peace of the prosperity of the city. See, that's something that um, that's a hard thing to swallow. So not only he told him to get comfortable, he said, pray for the city that held you captive. Pray for the people that's that's over you that that kept you that's got you in bondage right now. Go ahead and pray that they prosper because if they prosper, you're gonna prosper. Now, I know they're thinking like, now this backwards. Hi, you are God. You not their God. We serve you. They don't. How we gonna um, pray that they prosper? So this is another God saying, sit tight. And why you do pray for them. 
pray for the United States. They got us. We over here. You got to pray for the, if the United States doing good. Everybody going to be doing good, hopefully. So pray. We got to pray for our leaders, the ones that's in offer that they, they seek God and they make the right decisions so that um, we can live a little bit better. If they if they good, we gonna be good, you know. But if they if they get if the White House fall right now and um, another country come and take over, we gonna be in worse shape. You understand how that work? We gonna be we gonna be worse off. So we gotta pray that it stays strong and that that God don't let it fall, that God don't let it get destroyed. Because right now, if China come over here right now, the the game gonna change. Everything gonna change. You preaching Jesus out in the open and all that is going to be cut out. It ain't going to be like you think it's going to be. So we need we need to be constantly praying for the, the, the country and pushing the leaders that they turn to God, that they turn and repent. It might seem like, oh, man, that's just far out. That's impossible. But there's nothing that's impossible with God. All right. Yeah, so he's saying pray for they, that they prosper. He said, yes. This is what, in verse 8, it says, in verse 8, chapter 29 of Jeremiah, it says, Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Do not let the prophets and the, the diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies uh, to you in the, in, they are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. So, this sounds familiar. This sounds familiar. So, why they over there? They over there in Blundage. Of course, they they want some good news. So, they find some prophets. These are fake prophets. They found these fake prophets. They're telling them what they want to hear. They're telling them what they want to hear. They're probably telling them, man, you're a guy from the come get y'all a lot. Just sit tight. He finna come get it. It ain't gonna be too long over here. Yeah, he's. They encourage them to have dreams. I mean, they. So they coming back and telling them what the people want to hear. But God says they they are false, and I have not sent them. I have not said those words. So it's just like today, people are just coming in the, in the name of God. They come in saying God told me this. God told me that. I remember um, it was a prophet on TV. He said, God said Corona is going, it's gone now. It's gone. It's just the remnants of Corona. He said this way back in, it was probably June or something. He was like, it's gone. Now, God told you to say that? And we still here a year later almost? Stuff like that. It's, it tells people what they want to hear. And uh, Yeah, the people want to hear, yes. Your breakthrough finna, you finna, you finna, your struggles finna be over. You just hold on. Your season finna be right around the corner. But did God tell you to say that to them? Did God tell you that? Yeah, you finna prosper right now. Just hold on. Just hold on. You finna get it next season. But what if it, what if God say, nah, you're gonna have to ride this one out a little bit. Y'all gonna have to stay in this one a little bit. Y'all allow this to happen. What if y'all gonna have to, Come back to me and repent, but and when, even when y'all do that, y'all gonna have to you gonna have to feel this one a little bit. So you got to seek God and see what He's saying, and don't listen to the false prophets out there that's telling you what you want to hear. They're telling you everything that you want to hear because it makes you feel good. It makes you feel like, oh man, my bank account finna shoot up next month. The struggle right here. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be good next. I'm, and then what God, God going to say, hey, man, you're going to have to do something different. You're going to have to do a little something different. You're going to have to pivot and change the way that you do life. So you got to be careful of false prophets and people just tell you what you want to hear. God say, I have not sent them. I have not sent them. We always wonder how everybody's saying different stuff because you got to understand, people's talking and God ain't said nothing to them. God ain't said nothing to them. And they just talking, running that gator. That's what Renee said. But God said, yeah, I have not sent them. Y'all encouraging them to have these dreams because he knows they can smell it. They can smell that you want some good news. They can smell it on you. Yes, they can. They can smell it on what you want to hear. You put that, you put your, um, prophesy to me, you know, tell me. They tell you what you want to hear. Oh, 
it's coming to you. It's going to come to you. They don't get no to you. It's going to come to you. Just hold on. It's going to come about one month. It's going to be there. They can smell it. The Bible said right here, it says, y'all encourage them to say these things. Y'all encourage them. They know what you want to hear. They want to be popular. That's what the words say. Man, God, but God said, I have not sent them. They don't speak for me. In verse 10, it said, this is what the Lord says. When the 70 years are completed for Babylon, I might have skipped something. No, they, it says, they are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When the 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill good promise to bring you back to, the, to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. Nah, y'all didn't expect that verse to come, do you? This verse right here is one of the most misused verses I ever seen. Break it down, Richard. This verse right here is used to, they say that one passage of that verse, and then they, they make it seem like God has a plan for you. He has a, he has plan for you to prosper. This is what the prosperity gospel is, is built on. It's built on telling you one, but you you seen all this other stuff that we just read that come before this verse? Just ignore that. Just ignore that and just go right there and pick this verse out. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. This is the thing. They they'll get this verse and say that, okay, God don't he he won't harm you. God gonna prosper. So if you if you're not if you're not prospering, you must be doing something wrong. You must be something must be wrong with you. You must not have faith in God. You must not be doing this. They, they preach that false gospel, that prosperity gospel. It must be something you're not doing because God will never have you um, struggling. He will never have you in a place where um, you need to borrow. He will never have you. That's what they. That's what they're saying. They use that verse, and they. Um, I just stumbled upon this verse in the midst of my studying. I'm like, man, they. God was talking to the Israelites when they. He was just before that. He said, "Y'all gonna be there seventy years. Seven, seventy years, man. Seventy years, or nay. He said they're gonna be there." So we got to keep it in context, man. Listen. We got to keep the main thing, the main thing. Seeking the face of God. Secure, secure eternal life. Secure eternal life. We don't want, we don't know what's going to happen today or tomorrow, but our joy comes from the Lord. Not because he's going to prosper, necessarily prosper us with material things. Or money, or cars, or houses. Nah, our joy comes from the Lord because of who He is. Because He's gonna, He knows our, He knows our hearts. He has these plans for us, but we have to seek His face and let Him guide us first and foremost before we even think about all this other stuff. So don't just pull. God is saying, don't pull my scripture and, and just and don't talk about the part where I'm trying to build you and mold you. Like that, that pot that was messed up, I'm trying to shape you into something that I can use in my kingdom to push my kingdom forward so that I can get my glory and that I can let everybody know what my son did on the cross. Died for your sins. Rose again in three days. So if you're going to continue to trust yourself, you're going to continue to follow your own heart and not the things of God. Don't be surprised when you hit that that rough patch. Don't be surprised when you hit that patch when God puts a, a, a halt to your plans. Don't be surprised if he he, he has that 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 plan the destruction awaiting for you if you don't come back into him. Because he done let you ran all these times. He done sent you warnings all this time. He done sent you all these people telling you to get your life back on track. Telling you to surrender back to Jesus Christ. Give your life to Jesus. He done sent all these people uh, uh, to tell you, to warn you. 
repent before the kingdom of heaven is here. Jesus Christ has already done the work. He already done did it for you. All you got to do is give your life to him and say, Lord, I believe with my heart. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. Lord, help me mold me like that. The, the, the pot that the, the potter, the, um, the, 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 the potter was shaping and molding. I never trust my heart again. I trust you. That is what God is looking to hear from us. That is what God wants us to do. And he can change his mind on the future that you may be, on the road that you may be taking. He can change your mind and put you on a different road. And then, yeah, the plans he has to prosper you, but you got to do what you, you got to do your part first. Which is surrender to him totally and fully and give your life to God. Or come back to him and repent for your sins if you already did that repent again come back and get into his will get into what he wants you to be let him mold you and, and, and remake you repurpose you for his will because we all like that pot that's marred pot that clay pot that's messed up trusting we got messed up from doing our own will doing our own thing following our own heart but i'm here to tell you today that you don't have to stay like that you don't have to you don't have to be like that. It can be a change. But it's up to you to wanna to embrace this change. It's up to you to wanna get back in his will. So if you're out there and you you wanna get to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Father, Lord, I'm a sinner that needs to be saved. Father, I believe. With, with my heart and I confess with my mouth, Lord, that you are the Lord and Savior of my life. You died on the cross. You rose again in three days with all power in your hand, Lord. I surrender everything to you. I take my burdens. I take my sin, my iniquities. I lay it all at your feet, Lord. Mold me like that clay pot. Mold me. Shape me into what you want me to be, Father. Lord, help me to be a better person, Father. Help me to know what to do. Lead and guide me so that I, I submit to your will. In your son Jesus' name, I pray. Now, I believe if you pray that prayer with me, and you believe that with your heart, and you confess with your mouth, and you believe it with everything with is in you, you gave it to God, and you repented for your sins, I believe without a doubt that you are saved, and you are a part of the kingdom of God, and you will have eternal life. I believe that. And you don't let anybody take that away from you. You go after God with all your heart. You chase him down. You seek his face. You get on the floor and you call him until he come and see about you. You do whatever you got to do to get closer to God. If you want to join New Direction, you're able to join us. Just let us know. Inbox Renee. Inbox me. And let me know if you want to join us and connect with us because you're going to need a, a, a group of people that's going to hold you accountable, who's going to preach the word of God, yeah. who's, going to, who's going to tell it like it is, not how we want it to be. We're not going to try to control you using the word of God. We're going to let the spirit lead you and guide you, and we're going to teach you how to, what the word say in its fullness. Yeah. So if you want to join us, join the movement. You're able to do that. Just hit us up in the comments. Let us know and we'll reach out to you. But we just want to thank you guys for um, um, coming in. I hope you're enjoying your Sunday. And I hope that you're able to use this um, this message to help somebody else. So if you if you want to, just share it if you feel like uh, it can be used to help somebody else. Because you never know who might see it. Somebody might be struggling and stroll across the timeline and uh, hear, a word, or hear a word that might help them. So you, you never know. So just please like and share it. And um, I just want to close out in prayer real quick. I uh, just want to pray for you guys as you go your your, your uh, different ways. Lord, Father God, I pray that everybody connected with New Direction, everybody under the sound of my voice, Father, I pray that you just uh, touch them in a special way, Father. I pray that you just uh, protect them, Lord, from harm and danger. I pray that um, that you just keep their mind, Lord, 
keep their mind guard their mind lord anything that's trying to penetrate their mind that's not like you lord we dismiss it right now lord bring them unto you lord let them know that everything that they're going through is meant to bring them closer to you not to push them away from you lord because you are the only one who can hold them when they're hurting father you are the only one who can heal them when they're sick father you are the only one who can do it lord you are the only one who, who can be there for them because you know them better than they know themselves you know them better than anybody know them lord so everybody who's 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 under the sign of his voice i ask that you just visit them lord and be with them lord wherever they may go as a hedge of protection lord protect their family father guard them lord and lord we ask that you just um give us the heart to to submit to you father give us the heart to repent lord give us the heart to always seek your face give us the heart to always seek your will give us the heart to resist temptation father and lord i thank you lord i thank you lord we thank you for everything that you have done for us we thank you for everything that you're going to do for us in the future lord lord we're grateful to you lord we praise your name lord we give you the glory for everything father in your son jesus name we pray we say thank you jesus amen Amen. Thank you for joining me tonight. Um, I pray that y'all have a blessed night. And as always, um, y'all stay safe, stay sane, and stay saved. Until next time, we signing off. Y'all have a blessed day.